Welcome back. Let's talk about good folks doing good works. First up, the organization is Needs Beyond Medicine. The executive director, Philip Brown, is here. Welcome. Thanks for Good to me, see you, man. It's nice to meet you. We've had a Likewise. little bit of dialogue for a while to make this happen, so it's nice to and finally see you in that chair. Our but, schedules uh, mad, so. We got it done. For folks who may not be familiar, talk about the mission of Needs Beyond Medicine. <clears throat> well, what Needs Beyond Medicine d does, we do kind of a two-fold thing of, first of all, we give financial assistance to cancer patients going through treatment to help cover costs that are, we consider essential living needs, non-medical. Uh, it's kind of mind-boggling when people are going through chemotherapy how just basic needs uh, are wanted. And then secondly, we just do educational programs throughout the state on signs and symptoms of different cancers. Most of those are targeted on college campuses just to raise awareness and just say, hey, you know, make sure you keep up on your screenings, check your body. You know, you're, you're the best person to know your body. So if there's anything wrong with it, please seek a medical person or a specialist if it's too far gone, so. And you made an interesting point about especially with a focus on young people, college kids, indestructos, yeah. at least in their own minds, <laughs> that education is a really important thing because there's still, even with a, a I don't know, disease never feels quite like the right word to me for right. cancer, but th there's still enough stigma and there's still enough sort of human nature that people don't want to talk. Yeah, it's still kind of a, you know, some people even that are going through treatment, they don't want to talk to anybody. They want to kind of stay in closed doors. They don't think, you know, unless you have some of the more popular cancers, they don't think they want to be shown because they're thinking, well, I don't have that kind of a cancer. But with our organization, we're seeing it being diagnosed with younger and younger people, sadly enough, but fortunately enough as well, they're catching it on an earlier time schedule. So. And it is kind of a, an interesting dichotomy that I think most of us on some level kind of assume that the cure, and of course with yeah. many different kinds of cancers, but there's just that one magic yeah. bullet, but that the cure is somehow just you know, right around the corner in the offing, and certainly medical technology is incredible, but you made yeah. an interesting point about the increasing incidence of the diagnosis of certain kinds of cancer as yeah, kind of in the opposite direction of let's not get too congratulatory about that, that right, that cancer is almost sort of pre a thing of the past. Right, and I think it's just the biggest thing is I think a lot of people are being screened more regularly so we are catching it early enough and you know I think some people are hoping for the cure, I'm, I'm one of them of, you know, but I think it's such a long kind of a far away thing because all of us are so different with our own body. Some people, you know, live a healthy lifestyle and get diagnosed with something that's totally not kind of their stereotype. Sure, it's the lung cancer diagnosis for the never smoked person. Yeah, the runner, they eat healthy. Right, right. Sad so stories, but... Extremely well, sad, just but at the same time too, it's, it's helpful that we're seeing it increase and people are actually kind of taking care of it at an earlier stage. And it seems as though people are much, much more aware that simply a healthy lifestyle or pursuing whatever portion of a healthy lifestyle that they can is of great benefit in terms of your risk factors and the statistical well, yeah, and likelihood. Think, like we even have kind of brochures on just healthy eating and it's almost just people come up and say, well, it's an anti-cancer diet, and it's like, no, it's just kind of basic eating healthy, moderation. Right. <laughs> All things are good, and some unfortunate occurrences, it still happens to those people that do live a healthy lifestyle. But that being said, you still... Yeah, there's still you ways to... yourself a great benefit by... Yeah, there's still ways to kind of, you know, make sure, hey, it doesn't happen quicker than it should or aggressively as it should with some situations as well, so. Let's talk about the aid portion of your work. I'm just kind of curious about the logistics of that in terms of, are you 
sort of aligned at, say, the Hunts H Huntsman Cancer Institute, or so, how does that work that you find so folks we're, to help? We're just our own organization itself, but we work with all of the hospitals throughout the state. If they have a cancer hospital or even just treat cancer patients there, we have we work with mostly social workers and some cancer doctors that uh, I've had the ability to kind of get relationships with. So a lot of the people, when they hear Needs Beyond Medicine, I've never heard of you. And we're trying to raise it to the public of, hey, we're around, we do need the public support to help these people that are going through this treatment. So that's how they, are, that's how they find us, is in just hospitals. I see. And how can the average person who's watching out there now, how can that person help? Is it a, is it a financial? Yeah, need is it a, a manpower need? How always, can how can your we're organization? Always, we're always looking for financial needs. Uh, you know, we're not a huge organization, so even ten dollars helps, and they can just make a donation online. And we're always looking for volunteers or interns to help us with these education seminars and kind of other things we do out throughout the year. I see. And is that something that anybody can participate in, as far as that yeah. sort of the manpower side of things? Exactly. Excellent. As long as they're not a smoker, just because it kind of doesn't go with Kind of a little shame. philosophical. But other than that, I think we, we're happy to take whoever wants to volunteer or help us out. Very good. How old is the organization? So the organization, it was began in uh, 2001, oh. and I actually, it was an, kind of an all-volunteer committee, and I actually started with as an intern in 2006 and built up the business side. and expanded it and about a over about two years later the committee disbanded and i thought well i built this all up and right so we did that and then in 2009 we became an official 501c3 so we're still young and we're still growing but we do help we try to help as many people as we can in the state and you're the you're the driving the one. force do you have personal family experience that is is well, your driver or simply yeah uh well two things my mom actually passed away from ovarian cancer in 96 and so seeing that you know made me think how can we help people and just especially the education aspect because people you know don't think it and a couple other relatives battle with cancer and even myself i actually got diagnosed with melanoma in january of this year no kidding which Luckily enough, I get screened every year, and they caught it early enough, so they just had to take a chunk out of my arm and stitch me up and say, Go on your way, young man. Thanks for continuing to come and get checked up. So, Good for you. Uh, website address, so folks just can get in touch with you. Needsbeyondmedicine.org. Very good. And we are in the transition of kind of relaunching our website, so it's... <laughs> Be, It'll look pretty in about Be fancy new in here pretty so. soon. All right, all right, fair enough. And events coming up or anything that, uh, that we folks have a big, can participate in? We have our in? annual fundraiser in uh, November. It's I called see. Can Survive. Uh, and that's actually our fifth year doing it. It's a unique organization. We did it just kind of off kilter and said, we'll see what happens. And the public response alone said, hey, you have to continue to do this. Great. And what it is, is it's just a photo gallery stroll of cancer survivors, all different ages, different cancers. And next to each photo is their story of kind of what helped them get through, uh, kind of what words of encouragement that they give to other people are just something that they kind of help with. And a local photographer, Chad Hurst, is the one that actually helps us take all the uh, photos for that and he's actually a cancer survivor himself so well I, I have to say that the education portion of what you're doing is so important to me in terms of of seeing good news that people are are forcing the conversation for lack of a better way to put it so i think that's what's important is to kind of push through and say let's let's not skip this well, yeah. uncomfortable topic Especially and with young people. Well, and especially because it's such a sad disease. Like, people always Indeed. ask me on it. You know, my friends are always asking me, how do you deal with such a sad disease? But it's like, but you have to understand, we're trying to help the people that are battling it and trying to live. And then we're trying to help on the other end, people that aren't diagnosed yet that can prevent it or catch it early enough. Absolutely. So I think that helps 
tremendously of just saying, hey, look, it's out here. You know, there's a lot of education aspects of it. Just like you said earlier, medicals, you know, leaps and bounds from what it was even five years ago as far as cancer community is concerned. So I think it's just a huge thing of just saying, hey, make sure with your body, if something's kind of sticking around longer than it should, go see a medical person. And then if it's someone else, if you need to see a specialist, you know, you can email us or call us and we'll try to find a specialist. Good to know. Kind good of in know. your area or people that we recommend that we've work with as well. Yeah, another so. good reason to get in touch with Needs Beyond Medicine. Correct. I'm sure there's plenty of folks out there that have that little, in the back of their mind, something. Yeah, that's or they just don't want to know. Them. That's yes. the biggest thing is yes. they don't want to hear the, hey, you have cancer. The C word. Yeah, the bad C word. That's right, that's right. Well, congratulations on, you, on this wonderful mission. It's, as you know, but an encouragement. It's important yeah. work you're doing, and I'm glad we finally got to meet. Keep us posted on your activities, I and will. I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Thanks, Terry. Excellent. Nice to meet you. It's Philip Brown. The website is needsbeyondmedicine.org. Check it out. There's a lot of great information there, and of course, they could use your help volunteering financial and personal resources. Quick break. We'll be right back with Susan Mikesell from Mormons Building Bridges. Stay tuned to Mountain Views.